conversation today just to to let you know what what's in plan and i know some people are going to join us along the way let me share uh where i'm going to share like it's a bit formal because it's uh yeah, i guess i you know it's nice to to present this topic formally because um there's a bit of where we're going with this um your opinion matters and you'll see what it is um just to go back a step i'm gonna stop sharing and i'll explain to you then we'll go back to this well it's been happening um on the uh, french side there was uh there was um you know throughout all the uh, formation nationale mathematique in english and in the french we noticed that there was a, a like an undercurrent of issues in math and you it's not a surprise for nobody here that there is issues with our programs right and our successes uh, student successes and stuff so based um on my on my french colleague he did a lot of assessment and a lot of gathering data and they came up with like undertone undercurrent of issues that they wanted to address so they had called up quebec city mech and they were asking like can we present you with issues with solutions with suggestion would you be open to hear us and the ministry had you know they have new people representing new responsable program new people they were saying sure we're willing to hear what you have to say from the a little bit of an open door we took that and we said you know what let's bring our teachers voices our first responders to our students voices straight to quebec city and hopefully maybe there's enough noise that change could happen and if we don't try we won't know and change won't happen right so these questions were brought up on the french side and they like they came up with mainly four areas that they thought there will be major impact on student success if there will be changes from the ministry, if the ministry is willing to kind of look at, review a few things. So um, let me share with you their findings. And from there, I don't know if this, by the way, this, I don't know if it applies on the English side. This was done on the French side. We had put, I had put my input from the FNM's, you know, workshops but that that means what happens on the french side doesn't mean it is 100% what's happening on the english side or on the uh, you know indigenous side right because we have a different way to function and we have different clientele or similar clientele in some things so i'm bringing to your attention the field that they're willing to kind of put folders together to present to quebec city but i took it on me to to do a similar kind of exercise on the English and indigenous side to find what are issues. And if we have, let's say, a need, uh, if we meet on the same ideas and we bring it up to Quebec also, and hopefully we'll have maybe a bit of an impact to say, listen, we really feel if you come in and maybe modify this in this way, we will have, we better service our students, right? Let me share with you some of the uh, questions that came about. Okay. And uh, of course, after we'll come back to the resources and stuff. So the current questions to present to you, these are the first the four concerns, and we're going to go through them each one. Um, the first one, uh, this is a summary of the four concerns. Uh, adaptation of the youth first cycle mathematical program in accordance with our FBD, which is a second cycle. We feel that cycle one and cycle two are not in a continuum. Uh, and that there is kind of a bit of a, a cling that is not working be, be, like between sec two and sec three. Um, a second question was, we would like to have a VT preparatory mathematical program for a grade three and four, so like almost like a pathway, a mathematical pathway where we can get students faster to VT, you know. Um, a question three is an update of the CCBE DEDs to focus on a two-step assessment, like changing the assessment, the evaluation, having 60% in classroom activities and 40% exam, uh, in exam rooms, sorry, in exam rooms uh, for assessing knowledge. And question four is 
an update on the FBDDDs to focus on a two-step assessment, also having complex tasks being evaluated in class and have a 70% knowledge base in exam rooms, which is aligned with the youth sector. So these are the four main concerns that came up over and over and over, and that the majority of teachers felt that would have an impact on student success. So looking at this, if we take question one, and this is please an open discussion. We're going to give every question like maybe 10 minutes and you'll have uh, you'll have a survey, uh, a survey and maybe a follow up conversation for eat for our top two, let's say, field that we would like to participate in to develop. But for the moment, we're going to go through all four to see what you guys think. And, and if this is something that the English sector feel strongly about or not necessarily. Right. So question one is, would an adaptation of the youth cycle one mathematical program, sec one and sec two classes in line with our FBD, meaning with our cycle two, like our cycle one right now has a different intention than our cycle two. And just to give you a bit of historic, the CCBE one was designed, uh, what, uh, what was designed is to actually uh, with the intention of creating or preparing uh, students to be functional citizens. So that means with the intention that they get on the market faster, because back then when this program was conceived was there was Hydro Quebec, uh, there was uh, there was Bell Canada, they were hiring just li literally functional citizen in literacy and numeracy. But now times have changed, you know, and the the functional citizen is I don't know if our students feel that this is their purpose in taking the CCBE sec one and sec two. So um i don't know how you feel but when i taught math most of my students wanted that desk you know and they wanted to get into vt so they wanted they wanted to to kind of get to the end of it they didn't want to just get out after sec two to the market so again that's my that's my students and my feeling i don't know how about yours so here they're looking is to change to align the sec one sec two with the youth sector with the adaptation, of course, to our with our with our guys, with our uh, students, and having three disciplinary competencies, so having aligned it with also the competency one, C two, C three, and assessing also adding the assessment of complex tasks, so to better prepare them to better succeed in sex three. So, that being said, do you feel this is an area of concern that that we share? With the French sector, or this is something that doesn't touch us. So the floor is yours. Go, Julie. Um, well, I don't feel it's an issue for on my side for the students coming from high school to our side. I think it's more of an issue of where they want to go with what we're offering. So for me, it's the issue for me starts in level three, basically. <laughs> yeah. So that's my point of view. I, I don't like if a student comes in from a high school with a level one and two under their belt, they're usually okay. I I hardly have any of those. They usually they're usually starting in sec two because they don't have algebra, or they'll come in in sec four. I, I I never I don't have very many in between. But, but my question to you is, do you feel like right now, if you have a student starting in SEC 1, doing the program of SEC 1 and SEC 2 presently existing, prepares them to SEC 3? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Michelle? Uh, well, for me, it's kind of the, the opposite, but I do understand what Julie's saying, because up until the new program, I very rarely saw students in secondary one and two math, they were either three, four, three, four. But now with the new program from the students I'm getting out of the high school, even if they're at three or two, they can't even really function at those levels. So they're going back to secondary one. That's my experience here in our community. So that could be for many different reasons. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't feel that they're necessarily prepared for the three, but I'm transitioning into that, like with the Michelin with your help and some of the stuff we're doing. But yeah, so generally I find the math literacy of the students in this area 
area is is a lot lower. And I talked to somebody who works with um, the band in our area, and they were saying that they're finding their high school students are really struggling with the new math program out of the high school sector. And that's the Anglophone sector specifically here. For French, I can't speak about that here, even though we have the French here, but I do see students that did synchron learning and they were really struggling in secondary one and two math here too. And uh, that could be the learning method, but yeah. So for us, it's a big issue, never used to be. Our students used to come in at secondary three. We're prepared to stay in secondary three and advance through that. Now that's not the same thing. So thank you. Okay. Thank you. Baron? Yeah, so in my experience, like uh, I've had uh, one secondary student, secondary one student, like who was out of school for like 20, 30 years. And the more of the, the problem which he was facing were more of reading. So I gave him the book, which we have like a SOFAD or any other book, which you have the design plan, but he was not able to even uh, follow any instructions given there only number he couldn't understand so i will tell him like even using calculator was not possible for him he didn't know he never used calculator so i would have to tell him that what is addition means and uh, like it's really really basic and uh, so definitely that kind of program is not existing uh, because our students are on the other, contrary uh, one of the student who was like 18 and he again started at sec one level but he was out of the school because of illness. He was very good to pick it up. Like he, like in two, three months, he was able to attempt sec two maths and he was reading fine as well. But so depending on like what kind of clientele you are addressing, it varies, you know. Okay. Uh, Sonia, thank you. Yeah, Karmish Lin, yeah, on our side, uh, I would say, yes, the data is showing us, we just started to look more closely at the data um, where we have a very experienced cycle one teacher. Um, the students that get through cycle one then struggle in cycle three, where we see a big drop uh, in results, high, high failure rates. I'm not sure if we've been looking at the data long enough, but right now with one and a half years worth of data, that's what it's showing us. Um, they pass cycle one, but then high failure rates in level three. Yeah, and and just to just to remind everybody, uh, thank you, Sonia, for bringing it up. It's not necessarily the students' package that we're looking at. We're looking at curriculum. We're talking at curriculum. If we take the sec one and the sec two curriculum, does it prepare you for sec three? Of course, now when we're talking about numeracy, we're talking about literacy, that's that's beyond the curriculum, that is added strain on the curriculum. But we're talking about if we just follow, if we have a student starting in SEC 1 and following exactly the SEC 1 curriculum and SEC 2 curriculum, by the end, does he have all the competency necessary to succeed in SEC 3? And that's where on the French side, they find that the program is not built, it's not a continuum. It's like there, there, there is lacking competencies or skills in the SEC 2 and the SEC 1 to prepare for the SEC 3. That's what they found. But we, like based on what I hear here, it's it's not the issue or some sometimes. But thank you. Just to, I just want to clear it up. It's not students starting in 3. And I, I understand that because the majority of center in the past, students started in SEC 3 on. But I'm saying if they come in into our pro and, and note it to Michelle, right now, a lot of them coming in in three and they don't have the equipment from high school to start at three. So they, sometimes you have to go back to sec one and two. And if we rely on the curriculum that we presently have one and two, is it enough to get them through three? That's what my, my, my questioning comes into. Yeah. So Julie and then Michelle. Uh, yeah. I, I was going to say, it, there's a big difference between the curriculum and the materials that were given. <laughs> so um, if, if I can comment about the level one and two curriculum, I feel that 1101 is good to get them their arithmetic back up. Uh, 1102 is a great preparation for 3052. I think if they do 3052, they're they're they have a great basic for, uh, if you do 1102, they have a great basic for 3052. Now in the level two part, I find 
and other colleagues in my school board find the same thing. We find 2101 very heavy. Uh, I would probably distribute, uh, maybe put the out the uh, geometry more into the 2102 and evaluate more of the, like having 2101 fit right in line with 3051. Like really focus on translating text into algebra uh, into algebraic equations, solving uh, brackets, you know, all this stuff. Like really go deep into the algebra, so they have the skills, but they also have the understanding uh, on how to use algebra in a situation, and focus on just this for the two one hundred one, and then in two one hundred two incorporate the geometry because they have so much to do in two one hundred one with all this understanding of the new some for some of them variables are new. And so we, we do a lot of the algebra and then we, we throw in perimeter area volume, like tons and tons of geometry, and it comes back in 2102. Just to give you an idea why I think that it should be spread out is I, I gave a student 2101. Well, I, I, yeah, I was about to give a student the 2101 exam. And by mistake on the paper, <laughs> I put 2102, okay, by mistake. Um, but the student passed the 2102 exam, having not even looked at, at the curriculum for 2102, just because he was taught and he learned and mastered the geometry part of it. So why is it so big in 2101 when you can pass the 2102 based on that? So he didn't do any of the scale drawings, which gave you gave him like a 60 something because that 40% of it is similar similar shapes and stuff, but he got everything else. So I think it's redundant in 2101 and 2102. We should, we should focus 2101 like 3051 is built and focus 2102 like 3053 is built. So a lot of just all the geometry in, in 2102. You bring in a super interesting point. So you have to give me all of what you just said there in writing, because that would be super interesting for me to bring it back, because this is exactly So when we're looking at the cycle one, we're looking at each of these four modules. And if we could kind of reformat these modules in a, in a way that it's more conducive to prepare them in, in like, you know, in, in for the three, then it'll be more, let's say organic, you know, versus versus if we just take as is, like you said, it may not be their best combination for 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 where we want them to do. But again, this is this is depending, you know, again, we're just looking at curriculum. We're not looking at other stuff, you know. It's just we want to make sure that with an adjustment of curriculum for the sec one and two would help, will better prepare the student in three. And this is something that I want your feedback and input on because you're on the front line with the students and you see them you know, uh, struggling with that, you know, and if there is a way we could kind of reformat these courses to help them uh, be a more seamless transfer from one to a get to three prepared, then if we have this opportunity, why not take it, right? So, no, thank you. Thank you, Julie, for your input on that one and Michelle too and, and everyone. So that being said, I would like to bring in point number two, and please, you'll have the opportunity to give me your, your side and your suggestions for all of these points. Uh, but I would like to go through uh, like all the four questions. So that's for question one. Question two, and I'm gonna be a bit biased. This is dear to my heart. Would a VT preparatory math program for a grade three and four help students perform better in VT? Perform or maybe actually enter you know uh with vt note that this program will promote an experimental experiential sorry said experimental slash experiential pedagogical approach and a two-step assessment probably a practical component and a and single test which means that they'll have a summative test but they'll have a more hands-on in class kind of testing which brings it closer to what vt would do being oral being show me you know a different way, what we call like in assessment, a triangulation of assessment, different way of assessing how a student performed versus just a test. So um, I'll open the floor for that one. 
Do you guys think our students will benefit for a program like that for three, four versus in comparison to what exists right away right now? Michelle. Um, so I was wondering this uh, preparatory program you talk about, is this the same as, so what I mentioned to you, um, asked about in the email to you is, does this mean a different stream, like the way they have it in Ontario? I don't know if you're, how they have like, applied academic and they have advanced so would that be the same thing so like if students just wanted to go into like something vocational or they couldn't do the academic stream they could go into the applied which is pretty much the same content but just a like a little less intense because I found that that was very helpful when I taught it on the other side that they had that option because I think even if they did that stream, they were still getting a high school diploma. So the thing is a lot of our students who come and say they're from another country or like they don't speak English very well or they're very weak in math. And I mean, not, of course, in reality, not everybody's a math genius. Most of us, our students really dislike it and have anxiety over it. That's a whole other story. But most of them want to get their diploma. And it's really hard to tell when they're struggling and struggling and they really can't do this academic, um, the, the level of work that we expect them to do for these courses, to have to tell them, you know, they get to a certain point and then they can't go any further. And then you're like, well, I'm sorry. I would just feel it would be really good if they could still get a diploma, even if it doesn't open up as many doors for them, but they still get it. And they at least have some kind of opportunity. So is that what you're talking about? Or are you talking about something different? No, it's, uh, well, the thing is just to bring it back to, to um, in context, the whole idea of a pathway, an alternative pathway to the right. existing one is if you want to have like a different pathway, but still leads to the DES, which is the Diplomation de, de Secondaire, you know, the, the high school leaving, is you have to keep 80% of the content. So okay. the whole con conversation is to offer a student a choice to be able to get them faster where they need to go but still have access to their their graduation and in case halfway through they want to go back to the to the the other stream let's say if you want to have two stream one let's say the existing one and having that other it's 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 doable because 80 percent of the content is the same the twenty percent that differs, so the, the 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 transfer from one stream to the other is a lot more organic, if you want, and easier. And both will lead you to to an exit, being VT, being DES, being whatever. So yes, the only difference is one will be like traditional what we have presently, and the other one we're talking about more bringing uh, exper uh, like hands on approaches, uh, bringing a more. Uh, 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 like a more uh, like a like a more hands-on like a TS. I don't want to use the word TS, but almost like a TS pathway to get them faster to VT. So that means the age, the age program will kind of have to kind of feed itself in situational complex tasks from the VT program, so they can see what I'm learning in math and context. So it'll be a lot more contextualized, a lot more applied math versus a lot of like. John went to the store and bought something. This is actually saying, well, he's building a cabinet and he needs this dimension. So it's like, it's a lot more practical. So, uh, and this was a need, one of one of the new minister's top priorities to act, like to, to give access to students, like a faster access, not a faster access, a better preparation and a faster access to the VT programs, because we have a huge host of fields. And we have a lot of students that we lose in SAC three and four because the program is not made for alternative ways of, of learning. So this would give those students who wants to get into the VT fields, like the vocational, a kind of not a faster track because it's not a faster track. You still have to learn the math, but it's more and more contextualized an alternative way of learning math. So again, this was a question, but then we could reformulate it and suggest it the way that we see maybe fitting the needs of our students, right? So do we need an, an, another pathway for our student for SEC 3 and 4 to get them faster or more prepared for a VT versus other direction in life? That's it.
Yes, yeah. we do. Sorry. <laughs> I've just really <laughs> been thinking about this a lot. And I just wanted to know, so they would be learning because I, I just trying to think of how it was on the Ontario side, they would be learning the same concepts. And so, but would it have to have a, a different curriculum in terms of, okay, we're taking this out. They don't need to learn this or they're learning it in the same stuff, but in a different way, not as meaty as the academic, because that's how I know it to be. Because if it's that, yes, we <laughs> badly, badly do. I don't know. Personally, I really think we do. I do. And I mean, I heard on the grapevine, and I don't know if this is true, and if you would know, are they um, removing the different streams in Ontario now? Because they're finding somebody was telling me they found out that in Ontario they're not because they thought it was not a good idea anymore but that's the youth sector whereas we're adult sector so that's different I feel like you know by the adult sector they might know a little bit more about what they want to do anyway yeah. sorry I'm going to stop talking because um no. all your input is very valuable and please somebody like you who worked on both sides of the border let's say and experienced both kind of programs will be very valuable to put their input so please please write the strength and the, the the advantages of having that other way of doing to if it's going to help our students succeed so yeah definitely so the other michelle thank you so a lot of just to verify when you say vt you mean vocational trades i'm pretty sure i got yeah. that now and when you're referring to grades three and four you're, you're referring to secondary three and four yes okay so i just want to clarify that so yes um like i'm right on the border so i hear lots about what's happening in ontario i know that one of the the northern bands like between here and Rouen, has just gone with the ontario curriculum because they're considered federal so they're gone with the ontario curriculum because it's more manageable from what i understand but that again is gossip um, i haven't heard that they're taking out the three streams um because of the issues of uh uh finding employ employees for the, the trades. So I haven't heard that myself, but I'm, I hope they don't change it because I think we do need the two streams. I'm a, I totally agree with the preparatory program, but I, I right now my students again, who are struggling at secondary one and two are looking to take alternative routes to that by going through and doing the TDG exam. And uh, that's just terrible because then there's absolutely no math skills learned and they still need to have some co basic concepts for you know you know measuring and conversions and and all the you know percentages and all that stuff so that's why I, I would like to see the stream you know starting in second one and two and building to three and four and yes uh, maybe not as so so heavy but similar concepts but you know with the curriculum so that's kind of my take on that thank you Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Uh, I'm not sure if it's Varun or Julie first, uh, but Julie. Julie, go ahead, Julie. If I try to envision something to help the the, the VT uh, students, I'm thinking of something like the model for science, where the exam could be split in two, and then you would have maybe a 60% theory exam. Let's say for the worst one, right? 3053. So, so there would be a theory exam that has scientific notation, exponent laws, the weird volume of things with X as a side length, right? So this could be maybe a theory exam. And then having like a more of a practical look at the the other things like scale drawings and and looking at a plan in 2D and finding the 3D shape that goes with it and drawing orthogonal, you know, having an actual 3D thing in front of you and having to draw it. You know, I think that would be a little more hands on without going away from the curriculum, but giving an opportunity to get, first of all, doing it in two separate times. <laughs> that's, that's nice because a lot of our hands on students, a lot of our hands on students have um, difficulty sitting still for two and a half to three hours. So maybe having the first exam shorter, the other exam can be done in class within a lab or something. And, and they could actually have the, the actual 3D models in front of them or build the actual 3D model that they come from the plan, something like that. I'm not, I'm not saying the science building part, but being able to, to, to 
kind of experiment and touch the thing <laughs> rather than having a drawing on the exam. I, I, I would say it would need to be very well structured though, because if you would say, leave it at large, uh, any teacher does whatever project they want, I, I think that would go in so many directions. So I would, I would maybe do the evaluation differently like we do in science. Very valuable input. Thank you so much, Shudi. Uh, Varun? Uh, yeah, I also agree with my colleagues. And like in general, what I've seen having taught in uh, youth sector and adult that Quebec curriculum anyways, like when it comes to sec four, 60% in a ministry exam, nowhere in the world, I've also taught in India for several years, but nowhere in the world that benchmark is set for, like in, the, in India, we have a board exam, which is similar to ministry exam, which is taken outside the school uh, by external agencies, but the passing marks is 35% for math. You know, and there are 20 years of questionnaire available in the market, like 20 year exam, which you practice, practice. Here in Quebec, we don't have any exam format. Like we are not allowed to see a lot of ministry exams also. And in a new setting, uh, especially for our adult students who have been out of touch for a very long time, who already are apprehensive of joining school back again and coming up with uh, like, getting in a new like again a ministry exam giving them anxiety and performing like i i don't think like many people who would get uh uh less than 60 percent in sec four exam can become actually math teachers or math scientists later on like i don't 60 percent is a too huge and provided like if you compare it to ontario they have 50 percent and still there is a lot which is component by the it's not ministry exam at the sec four level plus lots of ex like the component are flexible like you can like she's saying my, my, i forgot julie probably was saying about the project based like 60 percent to project or something like uh it definitely uh reduces the motivation of our student and it affect the success rate like student success also like having such a high stand uh, benchmark so definitely we need uh, some modification so that students stay motivated and like uh, failing is a norm here. Like everybody passes sec like, four exam in two times, three times, you know, like uh, passing in first go is not a hundred percent result is just uh, like it's not unimaginable in this. Uh, so we do need a flexibility in our program for our students to succeed, I believe. Yeah, thank you. Very valuable. Thank you. Please. We, again, once I'm going to send you the survey, put in all your recommendation, and this is going to be very valuable information. Yeah, Jess, Disco. So I th thought immediately that this will benefit the my student at the indigenous sectors uh, quite well because a lot of them are hands-on learner. And yeah. from my point of view, it was kind of ridiculous when the uh, ministry set out to test competency and then restrict on how they want you to be able to show to apply the competency, right? And as that was, and so for me, that is more logical that to allow them the different way of showing their understandings. And it will be, um, and not only would it be, would it be great for the student who want to go into VT, but it will also be great for students who just want to graduate. Yeah. And, uh, like seriously, do, do, um, some of the heavy are so, some of the math are so heavy, is that, well, I feel that we are just failing them, uh, like uh, saying, no, you cannot call yourself a high school graduate. And so we, in our, in the ministry field, you might be like keeping on your standard, but what you really do is to kind of destroy the, um, the, the mental like the the inner soul of a student <laughs> that's it you're yeah. not really keeping up any standard because in high school the way things are tested pretty much if you have enough money to have a tutor if you do your assignments you will pass so what are exactly are we testing here anyway <laughs> yeah. so i find it good to be extremely un, un, unjust really yeah very very good point uh, just and and 
I want to just intervene a little bit. Just I, I if, if and this is for for the, the 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 people who work for with vocational people. And you could tell me if I'm right. One, I worked with vocational students, and you ask them why you're here, and they tell you because I want to do this because this is in the field they could see themselves doing it. If we look in FJR, like in our, in, in our schools, like in the adult education, it's so general, right? It doesn't have a purpose. And if you are engaged with the material, you're gonna get, you know, you're gonna get hooked. And engagement lately we know is an issue. Anyways, so um, Sonia, sorry. Yeah, um, it's a tough question for me, honestly. Uh, I'd have to really think about it long. I, but somebody right. mentioned earlier that it would have to be incredibly well-structured and it's true because the math that they do in accounting is different from the math that they do in mechanics for stationary engine mechanics. For, I work in both worlds, everybody. I work in both AGE and VT. And um, I, I even see a lot of science. A lot of the concepts I taught in science when I was an AGE teacher appear in our voc ed programs. So I think two years ago, Michelin, when we spoke about this, I was like, yeah, that's a great idea. But now that I've had more experience in various VT programs and I've got, I, I get to see what kind of math happens, if we start looking at the adult ed program and we try and take out certain elements and then ask ourselves, does it, does it meet the needs of the math needs of all the VT programs? I'm not sure we're going to pull very much out anymore because the math is very different across the VT programs. Now that I know there's an option of evaluating students the way the youth sector does, where there's 30% situational in the classroom, 70% on an exam, there's more opportunity for teachers to um, give formative assessment and to give the feedback. Now that I know that's on the table, I feel I would go for that more than create a program that is math for VT programs. That's how I feel right now, but I, I really do have to think about it. Yeah. Thank you, Sonia. Well, this is going to be a segue for the next two questions, right? For for the DB, uh, for the DEDs. But um, thank you. We'll keep that in mind. Uh, Michelle, um, I was just uh, thinking about what Jessica said about for not even for the VT. If it's a student who just wants to get their diploma because there's so many of those who I don't know what I want to do afterwards. I just want to get my diploma. I hear that a lot in my school. So, I mean, I guess I would have to ask the question of, so if we, mo well, if we modified, I mean, I, I guess now we're thinking, we're talking about changing it to be a certain percentage in exam, a certain percentage, but have the exact same curriculum as opposed to changing the con, like making it a little less intense, the content, like an applied, I'm still thinking applied. So would that still count toward, like have the same value as a, like the normal academic diploma? I don't know if I am phrasing that correctly, but like, you know, uh, we have a lot of students right now. They're like, they're coming in because the government is hiring a lot. Mm -hmm. right now I don't know if there's still any more but there were and so a lot of students are like I just want to get my diploma to go get a job in the government I'm hearing I started hearing that a lot when they came back from the summer so that kind of thing like you know to just be sure that whatever we do will still have value with what like it'll still open up opportunities opportunities to them be it vocational or not like I don't expect you know, of course, I totally am in agreement with that they should do a harder program. They want to get into things like, you know, mechanical engineering or any kind of engineering or like a computer program or like those are the ones that they go on in advanced math for, obviously. But if it's just like, I want to get a high school diploma. And as Jessica said, you're just sort of like, saying no to them so you're kind of just cutting them down right there and giving them no other option but at the same time you want to I want to be sure that I know that I don't know if I'm phrasing this but they're getting it they'll still have not just VT but other options just open yeah. to them yeah you know like 
Yeah. Like if they no. don't, think, they don't know that they want to do something in the vocational, like it's something, they just want to get a diploma. I think that's one of the things that I've noticed. It's like a lot, a lot of them will come and say, we'll be like, well, maybe there's the option of you doing the GDT. And maybe if you do the GDT, you can get into like, you know, at the career center or career center, you can do the PSW program. And then I'd be like, yeah, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. But I still want to get my diploma. So I will say, yes, it's a good idea. I'm going to try that. You're right. You're right. But I still want to get my diploma. So they, that that diploma is like this sort of, it's, it's, it's like it means something to them to have that. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. I really don't know my questions, but I just, I, I just wanted to know, like, and again, I will just say, like, I'm all for, I agree with, you know, I, I've thought about that before too. have part of the exam be weighted a certain amount and then in class work because I find, yeah, not everybody, there's a lot of them that freeze up on an exam. They're doing well, doing well in class. And then all of a sudden they fail the exam and you're like, what happened? I don't know. I don't know. I just, even if they have a memory aid, they're just like, I don't know. I don't know anything. And then they just fail. So mm -hmm. I totally agree. They should have a second opportunity. They should have another opportunity to kind of like bump themselves up. Anyway. No, I, I agree with you. And, and again, this is not, by the way, just to clear it up, this is in term of curriculum. We're not talking about like evaluation percentages. That's the other two questions. This is just to say like, if we take from the existing curriculum, 80% is just teaching it differently. We're not we're not just creating only a passage from FGA to VT. No, that's not what I'm saying. This this whole idea is we 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 look at VT and that's like to get the diploma and get into VT because it's a prerequisite for some programs, the SEC three or the SEC four. It's just taking 80% of the existing curriculum and teaching it differently. That's all. It's just to get on a more the hands-on. That's it. And to give an option, just to give an alternative option. That's it. So, Julie? Okay, well, with your last comment, I have other things to talk about. <laughs> but uh, the, the one thing I wanted to say, uh, doing, uh, like, going forward with, I think it was uh, Mr. Banja who was talking about this, uh, the, uh, the, the marks that are required, we have to see that in adult ed, they have to be proficient in every single course of level four. As with in high school, they have an end of year exam. Yeah, okay. But you could be terrible at stats and still pass your level four in high school because there's other questions in that exam. But in our system, you have to be very, like, you have to master functions. You have to master stats and you have to master. Like I know some high school teachers do stats in the last five days of the school year. You know? And we do stats for 20, like a 25 hour course um I don't know it's like we don't have an average mark of all three to be able to pass level four if we can have an average mark of all three I think it would be easier to have them go through because now we have to have like you were saying other other countries it's a lower mark than 60 that they need but we have to have 60 percent in everything in all the concepts and that's really hard to 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 master all the time if I take a student that finishes my program in level four versus a student that finishes high school, uh, there's a big difference because they master every single concept. And it, you you like the proof of my things. <laughs> I have a student that um, left uh, our school level. I know it's not VT, but she left level five high with me and her college teachers are asking her, where did you go to school? Because you understand everything. Well, yeah. Because our because our program is deep into everything, like they have to master everything to be able to get it. And do we have to master every concept in level three to go into welding? Like, really, do we need to be masters at, you know, stats to go into what? Like, I don't see why we should have all of these courses in in what they're doing. So I wouldn't necessarily say change the curriculum in the level because, like. Uh, uh, Michelle was saying you, you kind of need it to be open for anyone who wants to do their diploma so you don't you don't want to say well you've already done level three but it was just good for VT so now you have to do it again for your diploma so we shouldn't 
like this, the change in curriculum should be the same for both sides if we're doing change of curriculum. But I think we should take off courses that make no sense in what they're doing in VT. For example, you're going to be a welder. Yeah, you need to know X, Y, Z for sure, right? And you need to know how to do plans and geometry for sure. Do you need stats? No, you don't need stats at all, like zero. So I would I would modify their path according to what they need for their vocab. For example, uh, machinists, they only need level two math. How is that possible? They're gonna do more trig than anyone on this planet. And they don't have the trig class to do in adult ed before they go there, but they're gonna do trig over there, right? But they don't need their level three but they need to read plans just the same as welders. So like, it's like the, the VT just say, this is the level of math we need, but they don't look at the content that's in the courses. It was just, oh, uh, you wanna go in cooking. You need sec three math. Why in the world would you need sec three math to go into cooking? Like, I think the discussion before we change curriculum has to be with the people in the vocab saying these are our prerequisites. Well, why? Why do you need a cook to know how to do uh, geometry with X? You know, like, what? <laughs> I don't get it, you know? They need math too to tops, you know? So I think there's a discussion that needs to be had with the VT side before we change any curriculum like this. Interesting conversation, and 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 just to just to clear something, this this suggestion of pathway is not necessarily only to get to VT; is to get your desk also. It's just a manipulation of of the of the content to make to give the opportunity to have it more applied. So both will lead you to the same exit. We just said more VT because we wanted to include the hands-on component. Yeah. So, but Julie, you bring very interesting points. These different fields in education, it should be silo teaching. It should be everybody working together for the benefit of the students. So definitely we need to have more conversations with the VT department, with the sector, sorry. Michelle? Okay, I'll try and make it quickly because I'm pretty much understanding and feeling the same way with the frustrations that my students feel and the fact, so I'm gonna maybe open up a can of worms and it's a big issue, but I'm like, I was in the program for a long, I've been teaching for a long time in adult ed and I was there before math was compulsory. So I would have homemakers come to, to school and they really had a difficulty with math, but they were able to obtain their high school diploma and succeed and be very proud of it. And then they had the choice to come back and redo math if they needed a requirement, if they were gonna do uh, something that required the secondary four level math. So that was, I found wonderful. The other thing too, is our industry here, the palm paper industry, uh, the vocational thing is requires secondary four math, but yet right now the, um, the, the mill is hiring if you have a high school diploma and general utility people, which aren't even going to use those math levels, but people are not being able to be employed by the, the big company because they don't have a basic high school diploma. So that's concerning because then they're, they're, there's not a lot of people to pull from. So we're, we're seeing a huge change in the dynamics of the workforce in our small community. And the other thing is, like Sonia had mentioned, the high failure rates that we're seeing at secondary three, but only on a year and a half of, of the statistics, are we going to create a, a generation of people that can't get their high school for whatever reason? Is it referring to the difficulty or the levels of the math program? And instead of finding some kind of solution, and I'm not sure what the solution is, I understand everything that you're saying, uh, you know, like that's pretty cool when a student can get to CJEP or university and know all the math and then others, but then everyone has such different needs and individual based learning. That's what adult that is all about the individualization of it but how do we manage that in a fair way so i feel that the old program when people could choose to do the options what they needed and then if they feel they really needed the math they came back and they did the math that they needed um, is the idea of two streams better you know basic math versus that i'm not sure but i know that right now it's really um I feel that we're, I'm losing students because they just can't handle and they're coming from the high school section. They're not prepared. They're ready to get in the workforce. They're not prepared to spend another three years just to learn a math program, never mind French history and everything else that goes with that. So that's what I'm living. And uh, I understand that we have the palm paper course here. We can't even get it off the ground. And even though the mill is hiring, but they want their high school diplomas. So thank you. 
I feel your frustration, Michelle, and it's uh, not not no no not only in your center; it's everywhere. That's why these conversations are happening, Sonia. Um, here at Riverside, we um, some of our VOC Ed programs, the teachers do feel they need a math refresher, so we are allowed to use a local course code uh, from the AGE list of codes to be able to do that refresher course. So as an example, in pharmacy, um, our, our teacher felt know. that they needed a refresher. We do have a competency that is specific to pharmaceutical calculations, but we offer using a local course code uh, a yeah, math yeah. course that is very specific to the type of math they do in pharmacy. Um, so that is a possibility. That being said, I know the teachers always voice the fact that they want their students to come prepared. It's they, they don't want to add hours to their VOC ed program. They don't want to add another 50 hours because the students are not there. They, they want in and then they want out. Um, and also our sanctions, like it's, we don't want to make it a practice to add extra hours to our VOC ed program. So the teachers and certain people uh, with, you know, in the sanctions uh, department would want that math to be known beforehand, before starting their VOC ed. And I'll just say again, like on, on our side, I'm not, it's not really the math that has been a problem for us in these grade levels. It's usually the literacy skills. It's those complex, it's to even understand what is being asked after they read a, par a problem that's a paragraph long and sometimes a page long. Like I'm not convinced it's a math issue. It seems for, based on what our teachers say, it's a literacy issue and it's an executive function issue. Like how do I problem solve? How do I set myself up here? So again, I'm not sure if we should be changing up the math program or is it going to address the issue? And I will say like our teachers, <laughs> all of our VOC ed teachers were former mechanics and former stationary engineers and former pharmacy technicians. They need that high school diploma to, you know, turn it around and, and come back and teach the next generation. So it's... Uh, it's a tough question to answer. But but this but is they, sorry, sorry you did say it's my mistake. You did say the 80% still gives them their yes. They're yes. still gonna get their high school diplomas because yes. 80% yes. is still, still yes. Okay. Yes. All right, thanks. Yeah. So scratch so, my last comment. <laughs> no, 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 no problem. No, you're absolutely right. And this is why regardless, it's like having having options, right? Okay, so please, all your your input is really, really important. I'm just going to go through question three and fa uh, four because they're very, very similar. Fast, fast. I promise you, just give me five minutes extra and I promise you, I'll let you be. So in question three is what you all mentioned was very valuable in terms of evaluation, like an alternative way of evaluating our students because of their different needs, their different cap cap capability, just giving options, right? So would we need an update of our DEDs, like just our evaluation way, being in the, for uh, being for CCBE or being for question four for the FBD, you know, for the second, second cycle, cycle one and cycle two. For cycle one, the suggestion was, oops, the, the suggestion was to have 60% in classroom activity and 40% in summative evaluation. So to have still an end of semester exam, but to have it, to give it the ponderation of 40% and have the majority of the exam, uh, the, the, the majority of the grade being evaluated by the teacher during class time at a 60%. Or if we take a look at, again, the second cycle and having a 30% completion complex task in class, you know, with the teacher being present and 70% will be in an exam room. And again, these are all suggestions that was that came up. Do we wanna change this? Do we wanna reformat the questions? Please, these are all input that would be really valuable. And these are four questions that was addressed on the French side that we would like to bring in. Um, if you're interested, if you're interested in actually continuing conversation about specific question to kind of like think about it and develop it a bit more. I'm inviting you to uh, to write in, like to to fill in this um, this uh, this list here. Just put your name and email, and we'll probably do like subgroups discussing, let's say, specific questions in more detail, probably, and and like format it with more ideas. Um, so I'll be sending this to you, and also if hold on, just. 
one more last thing. I'm going to send you, uh, I'm going to put you actually, uh, um, hold on. Uh, Richard, if you don't mind putting the survey, uh, yeah, the survey. If you click on the survey, you'll notice the four questions are there and you could say their importance uh, to you, their rate of importance to you, and if you have any suggestion. And what we're gonna do, please share with all your colleagues, all your teacher, everyone you you know in the adult, uh, adult uh, general education, in the English sector, indigenous sector, anyone, because all everything that you will send me as is, it will be sent to the ministry, to the person in charge. So they'll they'll see everyone's comment, everyone's suggestion, everything, and then it's up to them to act upon things. But what we'll be doing is just probably I'll be compiling on percentages in terms of which question that seems to be important for us, the English sector, that we would really would like to stand by and and like support. So. This is just a, a first conversation and just the first introduction of what's happening on the French side. And I thought it was like personally really, really important to have a similar conversation on the English side and the indigenous side, you know, so we could participate into these conversation. And it's important. We're talking about our students. We're talking about our way of doing things, right? So please let your voice be heard. Write down all suggestions. Julie had so many nice details. Michelle too, and and Sonia, your input is and and Jessica, Michelle, and and Varun. These are really really important comment thoughts. And if you need more time, please take the time you need. And if it is something um, that you would like to discuss further, we will be like the next few math après cours. We will be focusing more on what's happening because it's already these conversations are happening on the French side. I will be bringing in whatever they had found to share with you. And if we could add our suggestion to that would be great. So, you know, at least we're prioritized where we put our effort, let's say, at least for us. So I don't know if that helps. Thank you so much for your time. I took an extra five minutes of your, of the end of the day. So I apologize. I wanted to keep it within the hour, but uh, thank you so much for all your uh, participation and I hope this kind of give you an idea of what's happening uh, outside uh, the schools.